Hi, my name is Emma and I'm an economist at the Reserve Bank of Australia. In this video, I'll give a brief summary of current economic conditions and an overview of the bank's recent monetary policy decisions from May. This information is drawn from the Reserve Bank's statements on monetary policy and is aimed at high school economic students. Let's start with economic growth. Growth in the Australian economy has slowed considerably over 2023. The black line shows domestic final demand. This is a measure of spending in the economy and it's the sum of activity by households, including consumption and investments in residential dwellings, business investments and government or public spending. As you can see in the graph, year-ended growth in domestic final demand slowed in 2023 relative to what it was in the two years prior to that. So what's driven this slowing in economic growth? The main reason is that growth in household sector activity has weakened, shown by the shrinking size of the purple bars. In contrast, business investments, the green bars, has grown strongly over the past 18 months. Public spending, the yellow bars, has also made a positive contribution to growth in domestic final demand. Let's dig deeper into the weakness in the household sector. This graph shows real household disposable income per person. Real disposable income is a measure of people's income that's available for them to spend or save after deducting tax and interest payments and adjusting for inflation. It's shown as an index, which helps us to compare the current level with what it was in the December quarter of 2019. The blue line shows that real disposable incomes have declined sharply over the past 18 months. The main reasons for this are high inflation, higher interest rates and tax payments. However, they are beginning to stabilise. Consumption, shown in orange, has also declined as people have cut back on their spending, particularly for discretionary items like dining out or shopping. Some households have also saved more than what we expected and the household saving ratio has increased, shown in red in the bottom panel. One reason for this is that high interest rates are providing an incentive for some households to save more. Let's turn to the business sector now. Growth in business investments, the black line, has been strong over the past year and a half, and this has supported demand in the economy. It's useful to split business investments into two categories, mining and non-mining. Growth in non-mining investments was strong in early 2023, but has moderated somewhat in the second half of last year. And looking ahead, firms expect the pace of non-mining investment growth to slow over the next year. I want to turn to another important economic indicator now, the labour market. In terms of the labour market, one of the RBA's objectives is full employment. This means achieving the maximum level of employment that's consistent with low and stable inflation. Australia's labour market still remains tight relative to full employment. This means that people who want a job can generally find one without having to search for too long. Labour market conditions have continued to ease but at a more gradual pace than what we previously anticipated. A key indicator of the labour market is the unemployment rates, the blue line in the left panel. The unemployment rate was 3.8% in March, only slightly above its 50-year low of 3.5% in late 2022. Indicators of labour supply, such as the participation rates and the employment to population ratio, also remain near record high levels. So what labour market indicators are easing the most? The first indicator is that workers on average are working fewer hours. The maroon line in the right panel shows average weekly hours worked in the Australian economy. Average hours worked have declined substantially over the past year, reversing the increase over 2022. This is because full-time employees are working on average fewer hours than before. And another reason is that an increasing share of newly employed persons are working part-time rather than full-time. The second indicator is that firms have reduced their demand for labour more so by hiring fewer additional workers rather than laying off staff. This is evidence from the decline in job vacancies. Labour market conditions influence wages growth, so let's have a look at that now. The red line shows growth in the wage price index, one measure of wages growth. 
WPI growth increased a little further in year-ended terms in the December quarter of 2023 to be at 4.2%. But wages growth appears to have peaked and there are some indications that it will moderate over the year ahead. We will now focus on inflation. The Consumer Price Index, or CPI, increased by 0.9% in the March quarter to be 3.6% higher over the year. This is down from 4.1% in the December quarter, but is still too high. Let's drill down into how different factors have contributed to inflation. Note that headline inflation captures all prices in the CPI basket, including some prices that are volatile from quarter to quarter. The orange bars show the contribution of selected services to headline inflation. Services inflation has passed its peak, but remains elevated and continues to make a large contribution to inflation. This reflects ongoing high input prices for firms, such as labour, insurance, legal, accounting and other administrative services. Rent inflation, the red bars, has also made a sizable contribution to headlight inflation and this is expected to persist. In contrast, goods price inflation has continued to ease and has made a smaller contribution to headlight inflation recently as you can see by the blue bars. The RBA has a liaison program which speaks directly to businesses about economic conditions. Firms in the program have reported that supply chains are largely operating as normal after several years of disruption. Measures of underlying inflation, such as trim mean inflation, can better capture the trend in price changes. This is because they remove the effect of irregular or one-off price changes. Trimmed mean inflation was 1% in the March quarter and 4% higher over the year. While the rates of trimmed mean and headline inflation has continued to decrease, the pace of decline has slowed in recent quarters. And looking ahead, it will take some time for inflation to get back within the bank's target range of 2-3%. The black line shows the RBA's central forecast for headline inflation in Australia. Inflation is expected to be higher in the near term than what we previously thought as a result of the stronger labour markets and higher petrol prices. But inflation is still expected to return to the target range in the second half of 2025 and to reach the midpoints in 2026. It is important to note that there is substantial uncertainty around forecasts that far in the future. And you can see that in the blue uncertainty fans around the central forecast. Let's finish up by looking at monetary policy and the most recent decision. At its May meeting, the board decided to leave the cash rates unchanged at 4.35%. The board expects it will be some time before inflation is sustainably in the target range. Keeping the cash rates at the current level is important to reduce inflationary pressures. This decision supports the objectives of bringing inflation to target and ensuring the labour market is at levels consistent with full employment. Thanks for watching the video, and for further information, have a look at the video description where you can find links to the full statements on monetary policy. And visit our education page, also linked in the description, for other student-focused resources.